Hello again. This is the last class of data mining with Weka. And uh, we're going to kind of step back a little bit and take a look at some more global issues with regard to the data mining process. It's a short class with just four lessons on the data mining process. The next lesson is pitfalls and pratfalls. Then there's data mining and ethics. And finally, a quick summary. So let's get on with lesson 5.1. This might be your vision of the data mining process. You got some data, or someone gives you some data. You got Weka. You apply Weka to the data, and you get some kind of cool result from that, and everyone's happy. Well, if so, I've got bad news for you. It's not going to be like that at all. Really, this would be a better way to think about this. You can have a circle, you're going to go round and round the circle. And it's true that Weka is important. It's in the very middle of the circle here. It's going to be crucial, but it's only a small part of what you have to do. So the, perhaps the biggest problem is going to be to ask the right kind of question. You need to be answering a question, not just vaguely exploring a collection of data. Then you need to get together the data the uh, data you can get a hold of that gives you a chance of answering this question using data mining techniques. It's hard to collect the data. You're probably going to have an initial data set, but you might need to add to that some demographic data or some weather data or some data about other stuff. You know, you're going to have to go to the web and find uh, more information to augment your data set, then kind of merge that together, do some database hacking to get a, a data set that contains uh, all of the attributes that you think you might need, or that you think Weka might need. Then you're going to clean the data. The bad news is that real-world data is always very messy. And that's a long and painstaking process of looking around, looking at the data, trying to understand it, trying to figure out what the anomalies are and whether it's good to delete them or not. You know, that's, that's going to take a while. Then you're going to need to define some new features, probably. This is the feature engineering process, and it's the key to successful data mining. And then finally, once you've then you're going to use Weka, of course, you might go around this circle a few times to get out a nice uh, algorithm for classification. And then you're going to need to deploy the algorithm in the real world. So each of these processes is difficult, you know. You need to think about the question that you want to answer. Tell me something cool about this data is not a good enough question. You need to know what you want to know from the data. Then you need to gather it. And there's a lot of data around, like I said at the very beginning. But the trouble is that we need classified data to use uh, classification techniques in data mining. So we need expert judgments on the data, expert classifications. And there's not so much, not so much data around with expert classifications or correct results. Uh, they say that more data beats a clever algorithm. So rather than spending time trying to optimize the exact algorithm you're going to use in Weka, you might be better off employed in getting more and more data uh, in. Then you've got to clean it. And like I said before, real data is very mucky. And, and that's going to be a painstaking matter of looking through it and looking for anom anomalies. Feature engineering, the next step, is the key to data mining. And we'll talk about how Weka can help you uh, a little bit in a minute. And then you've got to deploy the result. Implementing it, well, that's the easy part. The difficult part is to convince your bo boss to use this result from the, this data mining process that he probably uh, finds very mysterious and perhaps doesn't trust very much. So getting anything actually deployed in the real world is a pretty tough call, actually. The key technical part of all this is uh, feature engineering. And Weka has got a lot of features that will help with this. This is just a few of them. So it might be worthwhile defining a new feature, a new attribute that's a mathematical expression of an involving existing attributes. Or you might want to modify an existing attribute. So with add expression, you can use any kind of mathematical formula to create a new attribute from existing ones. You might want to normalize or center your data or standardize it statistically, transform your numeric attribute to have a zero mean. 
that's center, or transform it into a given numeric range, that's normalized, or to give it a zero mean and unit variance, that's a statistical uh, operation called standardization. You might want to take those uh, n uh, numeric attributes and discretize them into nominal values, and Weka has got both supervised and unsupervised attribute discretization filters. There's a lot of other transformations. For example, principal components transformation involves a matrix analysis of the data to select the principal components in a linear space. That's quite mathematical, and Weka contains a good implementation of that. Remove useless will remove attributes that don't vary at all or vary too much. Actually, I think we encountered that in, uh, in one of our activities. And then there's a couple of, uh, of filters that help you deal with time series when your instances represent a series over time. You probably want to take the difference between one instance and the next, or a difference with some kind of lag, one instance and, and, and the, the one five before it, or ten before it, and so on. So these are just a few of the filters that Weka contains to help you with your feature engineering. So the message of this lesson is that Weka is on only a small part of the entire data mining process, and it's the easiest part. So in this course, we've chosen to tell you about the easiest part of the process. I'm sorry about that. The other bits are, in practice, much more difficult. There's an old programmer's blessing. May all your problems be technical ones. Because it's the other problems, the political problems in getting a hold of the data and deploying the result, those are the ones that tend to be uh, much more onerous in the overall data mining process. So good luck. Uh, there's uh, some stuff about this in the course text. Section 1.3 contains information on fielded applications, all of which have gone through this kind of process in order to get them to be actually out there and used in the field. So there's an activity associated with this uh, lesson. Off you go and do it, and we'll see you at the next lesson. Bye for now.